What's going on everybody? So Scott here. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the stock market and buying and selling. So right here you can see the average cost. This is what I'm in with these different companies. Now I'm not giving uh, my stock picks out uh, just because you know I'm an amateur investor and I like to keep things to myself. Um, as you can see, some buying power. I got some buying power that I could put more money in. And we're going to kind of talk a little bit about that. So as you can see right here, I'm in at 71 cents. So 971 and the price is currently 987. Not saying how many shares I'm in with these different ones. Um, again, I think they're, you know, I'm not like one of these brokers that are trying to sell methods. I'm just trying to give you everyday advice. So first of all, don't go by any analyst or anybody that says, oh, buy here at this price and sell at this price. You guys, you can't listen to them. Um, first of all, you look at the charts. Charts don't lie. Now see, most companies trade in a certain pattern. They have their ups and their downs. And the saying that is so true is buy low, sell high. How do you know when to buy low? How do you know when to sell high? What is a low and what is a high? That's why you go buy charts. Look at the one day chart, the three day chart, the seven day chart, the one month chart. Look at the one year chart, the five year chart. And if you really want to dig deep into seeing how a company is stable enough, check out their five year plus charts, you know, 10 years and so forth if they've been in business that long. Then once you got a stable company that you're very you're very sure on, you can decide what is that chart doing. Now, as I just said, some companies have different um, patterns. So they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, and certain times a month they're up, certain times a month they're down. Now, most often companies follow that same pattern from year to year. However, some things can throw a wrench in it. Like recently, um, certain companies have had a lot of issues with the tariffs uh, that our president put against, well, that our president and other countries are fighting back and forth on. I really, I'm not too big into politics. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. So you just kind of got to learn the game. So because of that, it kind of messed with certain uh, movements up and down. Some companies have flourished and started doing really well because of the tariffs and some, you know, have been struggling. But what I'd like to say is check out the charts. Don't buy in the middle. Don't buy at the top. And what I mean by that is you see the line going up and down. Let me see if we can open up just a random company here. Let's open up. Let's go with this one. All right, so as you can see right here, there's a low. Let's go in the one week. So this is the one month and it's been nothing but headed down. The three months, you have some spikes up here and now it's headed down to a crash. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna buy like right down in here. You want to buy on the dip as it drops and then ride it out and then kind of determine what is going to be the high. This is over a course of from July 10th, no, from July 11th to July 30th. So, you know, take some time. Certain companies can spike in one day and make you a dollar or two or more per share and some can crash the same. So you want to check out the charts on the lows and here you guys can't see the full chart, um, but I can. And right here is the low. This was the low for this company. So this would have been a great buy. And if you look on the past history charts, you can see that it has spikes and drops like this. And when it does this, that's when you buy. And then you decide when you want to sell out. The longer you wait, the more of a risk it becomes. But risk and reward kind of play out. I mean, it's you got on one hand, you can risk the money and let it go up on the other hand you could just sell out and take your profits uh, that is going to be completely up to you on what you really personally can do because some people can stomach um, 
the climbs and some people can't. So another thing I got to say is do not go all in. And another thing I want to say is, as you can see, I'm in a couple companies. But what I want to say and just like down here, um, I have a couple just in these companies as well. But the biggest thing I want to say is don't go all in, guys. You cannot go all in. If you got $5,000 to work with, buy, buy on, I'd say put $1,000 in a company that you know is stable and strong and you can really trust. So you put $1,000 in that company. Okay, if it starts climbing up from there, okay, don't put any more money in it. If you buy, buy, try to buy in at its low, and if it starts going up and you hit that low, you got in on its low, and it just keeps climbing from there, don't invest any more money in. I cannot, never purchase higher than your average, because that's, you're doing it the opposite way. On $1,000, if it keeps going up, you, you know that chart, you kind of know where it's going to go. So if it constantly makes 30 cents or a dollar per share and you know it's it's heading up in that area, you know, okay, a thousand dollars can buy you X amount of shares, and you know uh, if it goes up 20, 30 cents, that's 30 cents per share profit that you're gonna make when it goes up. Great. If you put a thousand dollars in a company and it's at a low, but it breaks out of its pattern, and that's something we're gonna talk about. Um, companies do break out of their patterns from time to time. So what I mean is in six months, you know, it could go up, down, up, down, up, down in six months, have that same pattern. And then all of a sudden it could go up, down, up, down, 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 and just keep going down, breaking out of its pattern thinking, Oh my word, what's going on? Or it could go up, up, up and break out of its pattern that way. That's just a whole, it's just the game. So Say you put a thousand dollars in and you think it's at its low, but it all of a sudden it breaks down and just keeps going and it starts making new lows and it starts keep going down. That's why you got four thousand dollars to keep buying in as it's dropping. And I don't and so you gotta be very cautious when you're doing that. Um if it drops, say you're in something that drops a dollar and that's typical, it jumps a dollar, drops a dollar per day or every couple days. Okay, then you need to know in your mind, okay, well, if it broke its normal pattern, okay, I'm going to put $750 in at this new low. So let's say it's at, let's say you're in a company and it's at $20 and it drops to $19. It broke and at $20 that you got in at was actually its normal low, but now it all of a sudden broke to $19. Go ahead and put another $750 in at, I would say, $18.99. Okay, if you get filled, great. If you don't, okay, no big deal. If it kind of just fights around there between 19 and 20 for a while, go ahead and put another, another, you know, 200, 300 dollars in. If it's just playing between 19 and 20, but always buy below your average. So if your average is 20 dollars a share, try and get it for 1950. Put in orders at 1950, and just kind of focus on trying to get that. And only $200, $250, $300 maximum you want to do. So that still gives you 3000 xxx amount of dollars. Now, if you put in for $1,950 and it drops to $19, then don't buy anything else. You know, try and, try and stay in um, that 19 to 20 range with a low amount of money. And if it hits that $19 range, then put some orders in at eighteen dollars and like sixty five cents. I would say put in like two three hundred dollars at sixteen dollars and eighty five cents and maybe a thousand dollars at eighteen dollars. So you put these orders in and that way as it keeps dropping, even though it's out of its normal and it's dropping like this and it's out of its normal, you're buying in as it's dropping so you're slowly bringing your average down. Can you believe it? This right here, my average was $11. This was $11. But because I follow this method, my method, which is what most most stock people do, they just like to keep it from you and then they like to try and sell you things on ideas that really aren't what they do. They just, yeah, we're not going to get into that. I'm not a fan of 
99.9% of stock brokers and people that are on YouTube, they are all about making money and taking your money or selling books and taking your money, whatever. So I was at a, almost $11. And because I didn't go all in, I was able to scale myself down to 971. And now look, now it's 987. It took me a month to get to 987. But now I'm making some good money, but I'm holding out. I'm not I'm not selling out because I have a price in mind. I want to get over $10 per share for this company. So I'm holding out. Now I have a stop loss though. Now stop loss, that is, let's see how I can explain this. If you don't know what a stop loss is, a stop loss is you put, say you have a thousand shares on a company and your average share is, let's just use this, these numbers for example. Say I have a thousand shares in this company and my average price is 971 and the price is up here at 987. But I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little worried. I don't want to lose money because I have, if you don't have any more money left to reinvest in this company, if it would drop under your average. So for example, let's say this drops to $9. What would I do? If I have money in, I would put a little bit more shares in to try and bring that 71 down to 70 or 69 cents. I wouldn't go crazy. If I have $500, I'd probably put $100. If this drops to $9, I'll probably put $250. If this drops to $850 um, and kind of go from there with the money I have. Okay, so stop loss. Say you don't have any money to put in if it drops. All your money's in this and now you're making profit, you broke even. A stop loss would be putting uh, putting your thousand shares as a sell order, but putting it at, say I wanna sell a thousand shares at $9.80. I wanna take some profit, but I'm scared that it's gonna crash and go under my average and then I can't put any money in. So you put a stop loss order, a thousand shares at $9.80. If this would happen to crash and start going down as soon as it hits nine dollars and eighty cents your orders are going to be sold and that's your money it's pocketed it's your money and you're good to go so you don't have to worry it's kind of a safety net that a lot of brokers and a lot of stock investors use but they don't tell you this they don't want you to know these little ideas because they want you to lose money you know statistics say ninety nine point nine percent of your average Joe's getting in the stock market lose money and that is because they are listening to analysts and all these other people on different things on what they should do when number one you got to be smart scale down never never go all in okay never go all in even if you think you're buying a company that's at a low don't go all in number two don't be afraid to take your profits. If you're making $30, don't be afraid to take it. Okay, maybe it'll go up and you'll make $100 by the next day. Do you have the money to reinvest if it actually drops and you start losing money again? It, it all goes based off of how much money you have. You can trade stocks with any amount. The more you have, the more you make. That's why the wealthy keep getting more wealthy because the more, oh, it looks like so... Right now, I got a stop loss hit. I had a stop loss in this company right here. As you saw right now, it just it's gone. I sold all my shares because I had a stop loss. If it hits $318, that all my shares get sold at that price because I wanted to take that profit. So I just made I made that profit, but it was a safeguard against losing too much money because I don't have enough. As you saw, that was 300 XXX amount of dollars per share. I don't have enough money that I'm going to be buying a whole bunch of those shares. So I wanted to make sure I take my profits. And that's why I put a stop loss there. And it was already in. I didn't have to do anything. We're just talking it, and it went in. So now I'm going to go back and I will... Uh, 
go back and I'll follow that and now I will buy back in that company when it drops down to 308 or a price that I think in you know in my mind that's a good price by looking at the charts maybe I'll go three hundred dollars now because that same day it dropped to three hundred dollars but then went back up to 322 or whatever it was so I'm gonna now know that so I might buy in at 305 you know everything is you gotta be smart about things so I gotta stop loss with this and actually all of these have stop losses so I'm gonna I'm gonna take profit on all of these as you can see, these are my buy and sell, uh, the, my average cost, and then what it's at now. So all these, no matter what it does, I'm going to make profit. If it keeps going up, I'm going to keep changing my stop loss price. For example, I got a stop loss at $9.75 for this. But I do want $10. So that's why I put it for $9.75 as an emergency thing. If it does start dropping that low to my $9.75, I will cancel that stop loss. Because now that my other stock that was $300 some plus all those shares sold, I now have a lot more money to reinvest in something else that drops. So if this would drop under $9.70 and go to $9.00, I will reinvest in this one, take off my stop loss so my shares don't get sold, and I will bring my average down lower and keep waiting and then, you know, keep going like that. If you got any questions, please let me know. Uh, I'm just an amateur, but as of today, I'm making $300. Um, trying to go, okay, it won't show. It can't show because my recorder is up, but... I was going to show you guys my day chart here, but it doesn't really matter. I don't like, and I'm not doing this video to brag or anything, guys, because let me tell you, when I first got into the stock market, which was actually a couple months ago, I lost over $1,000. $1,000 of my hard-earned money that I've been saving up from from YouTube and different uh, other areas, I, I lost $1,000. Actually, I was down $1,300. And I rechanged all my positions and I tried, and that was because I was listening to stupid analysts. I was going by when they said, buy now, oh, buy, buy, this is a good time to buy, or AMD is a, is a time to sell. You know, I was listening to them and I was taking losses. You do, you make your own method and guys, it's trial and error or error and trial, whatever that is. You gotta, you gotta fail before you can learn. And, but don't give up. Now, if you lose all your money, then you're just a fool. Um, like me, that losing a thousand or thirteen hundred dollars at first, that's because I went all in on, on. I had over two hundred different companies I was in. So first, I start off with crazy diversification because that's what Warren Buffett said he, you should do. Donald Trump had over a hundred one. So I thought, but you know what? They have billions of dollars. They can do that. If you don't have more than fifty thousand dollars. Don't diversify more than 10 companies. Just don't do it, guys. And don't go based off of dividends. I was getting dividends every single day on all these different companies, but guess what? It was 20, 30 cents here, and I was losing money in the companies because the stock was going down. Don't ever go all in. Number one mistake I made, I was way too diversified. Number two mistake I made, I went all in on companies. So then when they started crashing, I couldn't put any more money in and I panicked because my, I didn't have the stomach for it. So I sold out just thinking, okay, I'm just going to get out. So I, that's how I lost. But thankfully, I only done that for about a month and a month and a half until I got my head on straight. And now I'm actually making up for what I lost. So that is good. Um, so yeah, it's there's a lot of... Don't be afraid to ask questions, but let me tell you, these big YouTubers that are stockbrokers and stuff, they don't really help you. They like to say, oh yeah, uh, be careful, buy low and sell high. Like, they don't go into details. I can guarantee if you leave me a comment, I'm going to help you the best that I can. doesn't matter that I have 23,000 subscribers, I'm going to help you the best that I can. If you're new to the stock market, I'm going to help you the best that I can if you have money aside but you don't want to buy and sell actual shares like I am with Robinhood here. This is Robinhood by the way. If you don't want to do that, then I will 
show you and sh some other companies that you can just simply put money in and then they invest it and just different things guys so if you need help let me know uh, passive income is one of the biggest things that I think everybody should have they should be teaching this in school it's sad that they don't but you know what they don't want people to get ahead in life and I can go into details on why they don't it's it's pretty sickening how this world works but anyway guys I hope you have a great day any questions let me know take care